Okay, welcome back, guys. And today we have uh, something really special. Uh, I had a lot of requests from everybody about uh, the brand Minolta. And Mr. Wu here is uh, very knowledgeable in Minolta. And we've got uh, quite a few of them here. And we're going to go over their cutting edge innovation over the years and uh, the, a, a bit about their history. Okay, Mr. Wu, what do we got here? Yeah, this. This aluminum bag, zero Halliburton, is all full of the Minotas that I have. Now, when I first start work as a photographer in my first job, the company's camera was a Minota. So I was using it day in, day out. Of course, before that in school, I already read about it, but we didn't have time to actually handle one. So Minota, Japanese camera brand, their company's name at that time was called Nichi Doku Shin, uh, Shashinki Shoten. Uh, in simple English, it probably means Japan German Optical Company. So they were actually emulating the German cameras. They tried to make the camera close to the German ones. Then in 1931, they coined out the name Minota. It's an abbreviation, Mechanism, Instruments, Optics, and Lenses by Tashima. So you got the M, I, N, O, L, and T, A that makes Minota. Now, one American photojournalist that was well known, I think recently they made a movie of him, Minamata, then the, the actor who acted in the Pirates of the Caribbean, Johnny Depp, he was the one who is uh, taking the role of uh, Eugene Smith, American journalist. He covered one story of a Japan village. That's where the name came from, Minamata. And what happened was that industrial factory nearby uh, discharged the effluent which contained mercury and the water flowed down and poisoned the village there who were fishermen and they, they were devastated by this mercury poisoning. So he went and covered that picture, that, that story. He was at that time using the Minota SRT-10. Okay, so besides the SRR camera, Minota also made twin lens reflex and they also have the rangefinders the Hymatic series and so on. But today, I will just focus on the SLR. Uh, the mount they use is a Minota SR mount after their first camera, the SR. Over the year, they changed because of the extra meter coupling. The physical mount is the same, but they added more control. So they became MC, meter coupled, and then a MD mount, but actually they mean the same thing. So what I have here, the, I try to start with the early ones. I don't have all the early ones. Uh, the earliest I have is the 101. So the Minota SRT 101. SRT 101 would be in the same category as the Nikomet. But they have full aperture coupling. So you can do the meter reading without stopping down the lens. And it's a direct coupling with the protrusion here and there's a lug here, so it's spring-loaded. So this will transfer the aperture to the camera. Don't need to do anything, just mount it on. Unlike the early Nikon, you have to do the twist and turn, the Nikon shuffle. So this one just direct on. and. The metering system, they have the CLC, Contrast Light Compensator. So they have a photo cell that reads the light, and they also got a photo cell that points to the back. And they will take the contrast reading and average it out. So that was a very early form of matrix metering. So you don't have to do anything special. You just aim, the photo cell will take into consideration the contrast and then it will give you a good reading. Mechanical shutter. 
They combine the winding with the shutter release. Of course, you have frame counter, shutter speed down, ISO. The rewind is a straightforward crank release down here. So it's, a, it's just a simple crank, there's nothing else. The meter on off is at the bottom. So you turn it on and it's a match needle. You match the needle with shutter speed and aperture and link with the ISO. So mechanical speed, one second to 1000. To reduce vibration for long exposure, long lens, macro, they have a mirror lock. So you lock up the mirror. And this mirror is a little bit oversized so that with long lens, it does not cut off at one side. So mechanical. And also, if you want to check the depth of field, after you have wound, you can press this lever. So it will stop down the aperture and also to do the stop down metering if you want. 10 second self timer. So it's very basic. The not, no frills, but everything works. So here you go. Now, for those who are doing camera repair, I have, I don't do much repair myself, a little bit, but I go into the YouTube repair and I go to the handbooks and all this, I find that this camera have many individual control cams for the shutter speed. So it's not just one control, there's one cam for fine tuning the 1000 speed. There's another cam for fine tuning the 500 speed. There's another cam for all the slow speed. So it's quite many, many controls to fine tune the setting. So, but there's the, the our topic is not on camera repair, it's just about the camera. So this was good workhorse camera, mechanical and uh, simple. Then this model lasted many years and they improve it along the way. So the last model that they have here in uh, the place in my region in Asia is called the SRT Super. In America, this is probably known as the SRT 3, uh, 303 or something like that. In, the, in Europe, they have one number. In Asia, they have one number. It's the same camera. So what they have is uh, they have a hot shoe. The transition, they still have the lockup mirror. But later version, they omitted this. And then the same, you've got the, but what they have extra. Now, there's a little bit of prism here. You can view the aperture inside the camera. In the original camera, you can see the shutter speed at the bottom, they have a row. But this one, you have the shutter speed plus the aperture. This little window, the prism that uh, reads this uh, aperture number, we call this the Judas window. Okay, it's like old ancient gate, big gate with a small window. Uh, in some of the old German camera, we have that also. There are little prisms so you can have all the information without taking your eye away from the camera. So they call it the Judas window. And where I have, I will put this lens case here. Normally, there's another piece that clips over here and you cover the whole camera. In those days, when you buy the camera, this is supplied, complete. They call it the ever ready case. I call it the never ready case. Because by the time you open up, your picture all gone. But I keep this half. I keep this half, not so much. The, the main reason I use it is if you just have the camera without this, and if somebody try to be funny or cheeky, they just have to pull this up and ruin all your film. So, when I put this on, this will not happen. So, even if you pull this up, the back cover will not open. So, I just use it as a safety measure. Okay, this is the case. So, you have the SRT. Everything, metal and mechanical. Then, along the way, Minota didn't have any big flagship camera. This one, they have a small variation. They got one which got a built-in motor. 
They call it the SRM, but without light meter. So you got a bit more. This one handle wine. Then later on in 1973, they did something very interesting. You must remember, 1973 is not the year the F3 was produced by Nikon. Nikon F3 came out in 1980. This one came out in 1973. So they are about 10 years early. They already have a aperture priority meter prism. Okay? And they have a titanium shutter. Titanium shutter. Yeah, so this is supposed to be the top line. They were trying to make something to compete with Canon F1, with uh, Nikon F2. So very good camera. Got a unique meter switch. You put pressure here, the camera turn on. Of course, you can turn it on independently. So when you put pressure here, the, the current ones, you can take picture. Then you got the meter prism. You got the waist level, high level, and so on. Now. One thing they did not do was to put provision for a motor drive. That time, every professional wanted a motor drive. Then they came up with one with the XK motor. Another motor, but it's uh, permanently attached. You cannot take it out. So that came out too, too slow, too late. So it was meant to be a flagship camera, but it never took off. But nevertheless, it's still a very good, robust camera. So X1, X1, they are top line. Then the electronic age came. So they came up with the XE5, XE1, with auto exposure, metal vertical shutter. And as early as uh, 72, they have cooperation with Leica company. So the Leica company adopted the XC1 platform and made the Leica R3. And some of the more compact Minota, Leica used it to be the basis of the R4, R5, R6, R4, R5. Then they have the multi-mode compact camera. Electronic, metal shutter, smaller size body, smaller in comparison, same like the FM and uh, they come at smaller size. So this one uses metal shutter, multi-mode uh, metering. You got shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual. And you got a mechanical speed and a B. These two will run without battery. Uh, mount is the same. Yeah. Also, you can see the aperture inside the viewfinder, tap of field self-timer. Now, this camera got an interesting way of metering. When you use it on S or A, it will give the reading, and it, when you trip the shutter, it will fine-tune the exposure for any deficiency in the aperture. Sometimes aperture doesn't close to the right size. It will take that into consideration and it will adjust the shutter speed to fine-tune it. So it's like you will make a minor adjustment before the final exposure. Okay, so that was this. From this came out many models. So got the XD11. Then for the simpler consumer market, they have a simple one. So to simplify the cost, they put cloth shutter. This is the XG series. So instead of uh, metal shutter, so they have cloth shutter. Cost less to make. Okay. Then you can put a winder, you can change the lens, the mount is the same. And by this time, Minota has developed the Acumet screen, very bright focusing screen. So bright, even Hasselblad asked Minota to provide the screen for them, the Acumet screen. Then this one accumulated in the X series, the Minota X700. Uh, in terms of specification, it's not as high end as the other camera brand, but good enough, and it won the camera, European Camera of the Year Award. So, a good camera. It sold many units, so it was popular. So, we have this Minota. Okay, let's make this a part one here. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, uh, hang on, guys. So uh, let me make this a part one, and then we'll get to part two in a couple of seconds. Okay, thanks.